Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face And still another hundred miles to my next resting place Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon Within my car I'm all alone But feeling good and feeling strong Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself I'm driving Hey now all, this is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta, and you are listening to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. Today, I am joined by Grant Merrill Merrill again. Uh, He was a fundamentalist evangelical pastor before his deconstruction journey led him into a wide open faith as a gay ordained United Methodist pastor, which he has now also left behind. Uh, Grant is also known as Pastor G on TikTok, and you should definitely check him out there. But you know him better from the Seven Deadly Sins series, which is what we're talking about again today. Welcome back, Grant. Hey, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me back. Super excited. So, you know, I and the last two we did, I was just like, wow, I love this, right? And so I'm super excited to do this one too. And especially since, you know, this is my husband's spirit animal, the sloth. <laughs> so, you know, uh, when we talk about sloth, let's, first let's define it because... You know, it is sort of a, a, a not very often used term. And so sloth is not an animal in this case. <laughs> so uh, sloth means to be lazy and uh, indolent, right? Uh, to, to, to laze about and to have no purpose, right? Absolutely. And I think the purpose piece, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think so often when we think of sloth, we think of laziness, we think of not acting, not doing anything. We think of couch potatoes. Uh, but really, sloth in this sense is, is more talking about not purpose, uh, n- not having a purpose, not having um, a motivation uh, behind living and behind actions. Yeah. And to be clear, for those of you listening, I was not saying that my husband is a lazy ass. <laughs> he, he loves the bed is what I mean. He really is the son of Morpheus, the god of sleep, right? He is in love with his sleep time. And that's what I meant by that. It was not an insult. So yeah, you know, you never know. <laughs> what, what, I'm like, no, I really need to clarify that. Sleep is great. Sleep is awesome. We love the sleep. So anyway, uh, so when we're talking about sloth in this instance, and and if we're defining it as a lack of purpose, right? Um, Have you read the book Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill? I haven't. Okay. It just came out in 2012, which is, you know, long after he died. His estate held on to the book for a very long time because they thought that the world wasn't ready for it. And I'm not surprised because it is him having a conversation with the devil. Much like conversations with God is Neil Donald Walsh having a conversation with God. And it is fascinating. But the core of the book is simply this. When you a human does not have a purpose, they tend to drift. And the drift is what is what is the sloth of the seven deadly sins, right? And so the drifting is, you know, it's kind of what we're doing when we're binging Netflix or we're we're doom scrolling on TikTok or Facebook or whatever, right? It's the the never ending but purposeless drive for random information that serves nothing. It will literally reduce your brain to mush. And and I know this because I've been experiencing it personally. Yes, <laughs> we yeah. all, uh, winter does that to us. We turn into- well, Winter and a couple of years of pandemic, yes. <laughs> yes, that's, that's fair enough. Little details, you know. Little details. <laughs> and I would say even- the, this topic of sloth is really interesting. What what struck me about this is you would think that this wouldn't be a problem in Western society, especially capitalistic America, because 
there are very few of us within our society that truly practice sloth in that sense. You know, we we are a driven society. We're constantly doing, and and I would say that we deify productivity, but purpose. If purpose is is the true characteristic of not living a sloth life, perhaps all of us or many of us are sloths, even though our calendars are full and and we're going, going, going. I think that um, so often uh, in our society, uh, we we are busy sloths. We, we may never rest. We may never sleep well. We may not ever have a free moment, but we live life without any sense of purpose. Um, yeah. purpose of soul, purpose of heart. I think sloth can look like lots of things. You know, if we think about it from a sense of purpose, one of the things that I've always said to people is that your purpose is the fullest expression of your authentic self. And that that is when you are in your element, when you are in, when you're being fully you, that's when you will be on purpose, no matter what you do. It gets a little complicated if we say we're being slothful when we're being busy. Although I don't disagree with that. <laughs> um, so here, here's the thing, though, right? We've got this idea that we have to be productive. And we produce and produce and produce until we're so burned out that we can do nothing but actively drift, Binge Netflix, or as I like to say, let the TV watch me, right? Um, because I'm not registering anything I'm watching anyway, so it doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> it's like I'm not really watching it, it's watching me. And so we burn ourselves out to the point where we are non, non-compost mentis, <laughs> we are non-functional, right? And we are, uh, this is where the drift comes in. And when you give, you know, we have this thing, leave it all on the field, right? You know, even, even us women who were not necessarily, you know, athletes and I was an athlete, but I never heard that phrase in the entire time I was an athlete. Um, It's, it's a men's phrase, but it's used in business all the time. And, you know, even, you know, we'll, we'll get to the point where we've left it all on the field by three o'clock and now we got nothing left for the rest of the day. Right. And we're sitting here and and that means that actually half of your life is spent drifting and the other half is spent on the hamster wheel trying to achieve something that is a never ending cycle of crap you have to deal with. Right. That you're never done. Right. And so, you know, this is why I think we're seeing the Great Resignation right now. Um proud member of the great resignation myself. Absolutely. Yes, you are right here. We just talked about it, right? Okay. That you just, you, you left the church very recently. And, you know, a lot of it's because, you know, one, we had two years of, of self-reflection, <laughs> but we also had two years of heavy duty burnout. I mean, it's trauma, two years of trauma, man. I don't care which side of the debate you're on. We've been traumatized. And so, you know, there is this, piece where it's like, is it burnout or is it sloth? So what's your thoughts on that? Oh, um, I would say it's burnout more than sloth. I would, uh, again, I think that so if we're talking to a Western or an American context, primarily on this podcast, I would say we almost go the opposite direction. Most often busyness is, is so, so often, you know, we, we think we have to keep going, uh, so I would say burnout more than sloth is what we're seeing and feeling. That was the case with me. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that I was a part of the Great Resignation. Uh, no one can accuse me of being a sloth. Uh, you know, in 15 years of ministry, I served uh, four congregations um, of varying sizes. I oversaw a $13 million renovation and a building project, two remodeling projects uh, at other congregations. I oversaw youth groups and community programs, and I did it all. And at the end of the day, I lost myself in that. I had no purpose. I was doing, I was doing what needed done, and and I didn't feel a sense of purpose from my soul into my heart. Uh, and I think that that's the and that's why the opposite or the counter, the virtue for this isn't busyness. It's diligence. And I think that there's a bit of a difference between diligence. Doesn't speak to action. It speaks to a a, a purpose and a heart. It, it speaks to a a greater movement. 
Um, yeah, it, it speaks to an investment in the outcome. Yeah, it has that flavor of I care whether or not this works, not just because it reflects on me and my abilities, but because I care about the outcome, right? Yeah. And I think that's true. You know, I mean, I've, I've recently, so um, you're, you're new here, so you don't know this, but uh, uh, of course, I'm just gonna make a huge amount of noise here trying to move over just half an inch to get to the mic better. Uh, but the, I have recently changed. So, so, hmm, wow, probably the first year that I did this podcast, I taught people a uh, process for putting in a circuit breaker for your energies. And the idea being that when you got to 25% of your uh, total energy reserves, that the circuit breaker would shut off. And you would go from being wide awake to like needing to sleep immediately, right? And that would tell you that you would hit your circuit breaker. And at the time that I set this up, I thought, oh, 25%, that's a good number. Yeah. And over the years, I have increased my setting. And uh, what I've come to realize in the intervening time is that we really should be at 100% all the time. And that, you know, 25% is ridiculous, right? <laughs> and so... Um, but I couldn't do it for less than that because otherwise I would be asleep all day. And so I recently moved it from 50 to 75% with the intention of bringing it to 100 over time. And today I'm working on my book, right? And I'm, so I'm, those of you who don't know, which is all of you because I haven't mentioned it before, uh, I am writing a book and it is... Uh, coming along nicely. I've got 70 pages and I, I don't think it's going to be much more than that, but you know, we'll see. And I've been working on it for the last few weeks. And today I got up and I did some accounting and then I started to fall asleep. <laughs> and I went, oh, okay. So I went and sat down and played my game on my phone for a little bit and had some coffee and had some breakfast and, you know, hung out for a bit. And then I went and worked on my book for a little bit and then started to fall asleep. <laughs> so I went and I sat down and I watched a TV show and I chilled out, you know, <laughs> I was like, okay. And then I came back and I worked on my book a little bit more until I got tired again. And I went back and I took the entire afternoon off because clearly I'd been just working too hard. I'm like, okay, I'm, I clearly I'm done. And so and, and I did that until you and I got on here tonight. And so, you know, this is one of the things is that when you've been dealing with hardcore burnout, which all of us have, and you are not very good at self-care, which none of us are, <laughs> I don't want to say none, most of us aren't, then, you know, you really, it's a practice. It's a practice to take the downtime. And I would have gone outside for a walk, but it was raining and I didn't want to go out in the rain and it was going to be snowing and I didn't want to potentially slip on the ice. Um, but tomorrow my hot tub arrives and I will be sitting in my hot tub anytime I have one of those moments. <laughs> so I will have a plan, right? So yeah, but this is the thing, right? We have to come and go from it because I have the diligence to work on my book. I just don't have the energy if I don't go below 75% of my reserves in this moment. And that's okay, right? It's okay. Yes, I have a deadline that I'm working to. And yes, I have some goals and whatever. And yes, I'll get there. But if I have to get there in half an hour or an hour burst here and there, I'll do it. And that's how I listen to myself and my body. And as I build up after I go on vacation next week, I'm going to Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Costa Rica next week, um, which, by the way, is both vacation and research because I'm checking out the retreat site to see if it'll be a valid retreat site for us to use. So, yay. Um, then I will probably be fine <laughs> to work because I'll have had five solid days off and, and that'll be great. Um, so, you know, these are the types of things that we look at, right? And so... Any historical things you want to throw into the mix on this one? I know we talked a lot of history the last time we went through. 
I, I think it smacks a little bit of, uh, I'll, I'll talk liturgy. How does that sound? Oh, we didn't talk awesome. liturgy last time. Yay. <laughs> so I, I am a huge liturgical nerd. I think that there's a lot of beauty in uh, language and in structure. I, I find great value in that personally. And one of one of the things that I think a lot of people uh, don't realize is uh, the the Christian calendar, uh, the, the liturgical calendar, as, as I would call it, um, is set up. It's not just haphazard holidays, but it's set up on, on purpose. Now, um, uh, pagans and Wiccans will recognize will recognize um will recognize it set up as a wheel uh, <laughs> what do you know and <laughs> I we stole we the that. pagan calendar <laughs> yes exactly we did steal it from the pagan calendar um but it's set up as a wheel as a structure and so we have uh high holy days uh, we have uh, the high holy day of christmas and the high holy day of easter um uh, both of which uh, have seasons that pertain to them and so those seasons each have a time of rest and penitence followed by a time of celebration that kind of leans into this. Uh, so often we think that rest is sloth, when in reality, rest is a sacred and holy thing, and it's necessary. Self-care is a necessary thing. And so before Christmas is celebrated every year, uh, Christians globally celebrate the season of Advent, which is a season of rest and penitence. And before Easter is celebrated, uh, uh, there is a season of rest and penitence uh, beforehand. And after those celebrations, uh, after the celebration of Christmas and after the celebration of Easter, there's a season of growth because those things feed us. Rest and celebration nourish the soul. And then we have these seasons of, it's it's called ordinary time or common time, but they're just times of growth where we talk about um, uh, ways of living, ways of, of acting in the world, ways of engaging in society around us. And I think that that's a good structure. And it's not really historical, though Though the seasons of, of Advent and Lent uh, were in practice in some form since uh, the like 500s. So we're talking a long history of, of, of these seasons in some form. Um, but I think that, that that kind of leans into this conversation, this, this idea of sloth and diligence um, uh, really echoes in the life cycle of rest and celebration and productivity, that all these things have their place and they're all in moderation, important parts of, of a fruit-filled and, and fulfilled life. Um, and so that's not really history so much as a liturgically, uh, you know, nerd out moment, but it's it's a historically significant thing because for 1500 plus years, that that cycle has been uh, a part of a part of the, the Christian, the liturgical calendar. The, the wheel that we stole. <laughs> and if you're curious about that, you can go back and listen to the Wheel of the Year, which we did as a series last year. Uh, and it started on Yule with Cool Yule. So you can you can review that and that'll give you an idea of what the Christian holidays are that correspond to the Wheel of the Year from, from the pagan calendar. So, but the, uh, <laughs> you know, there is, it, it's so interesting because we do have this pathological need to be, be productive, right? It's just, and for those of us who come out of traumatic backgrounds where we have the hypervigilance and the constant, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? I'm not valuable unless I'm doing blah, blah, blah thing going on. Then what happens is that, that we, we have a very difficult time relaxing. We have a very difficult time giving ourselves permission to be still. And in fact, when I went on walkabout, I remember the first month that I was on walkabout, which I, I literally, I was not, I hadn't left my house yet, right? I didn't even know I was on walkabout yet. I just had, had quit everything and was preparing to move, I thought, and really was doing a whole lot of nothing. And it took me a whole month to stop going, <gasps> I should be, I should be, I should be, I should be every like minute and a half. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't, unless I was engaged in the television or engaged in reading a book or engaged in conversation with someone. If I was just sitting still by myself, I was constantly in this state of I should be, I should be, I should be. And that I think is, is endemic to the U.S. Uh, you know, I've, I've traveled in, in, Europe and I've traveled in other countries um, and that is not true in other countries. 
And you guys have it a lot easier, let me say, okay? A lot easier because here it's all about what did you do today? What have you done for me lately? What you did yesterday doesn't even count today, right? And and that's, uh, it's an in, it's a insidious thing. It is, uh, it, it poisons your enjoyment of life. And if I were to give you one thing, and of course, I'm doing the wrap up in the middle of the episode. <laughs> but if I were to give you one thing to remind you, you know, for you to take away from this, it would be that the, the no doing, the doing nothing is valuable. It has purpose. You know, it, Stephen Covey talks about sh- sharpening the saw. There's an entire chapter in his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And it says sharpening the saw, which is taking time to be still, taking time to tend to your tools. If you're going to go and cut down a tree, before you cut down that tree, the first thing you're going to do is sharpen the saw because it's going to take you 10 times as long to cut down the tree with a dull saw as it will with a sharp one. And you're more likely to hurt yourself in the process. And so, you know, this idea that we have that we're go, 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 take a minute, go, 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 take a minute, right? Which is kind of what I did today. And so I'm, I'm calling myself out on this. Right? My, my husband looked at me and said, take the entire afternoon off. And I was like, I can't, I have a deadline. I want to be done with this book before I leave. So I don't have it on my mind while I'm gone. And he's like, okay, I get it. Right. But, um, you know, that's a short term thing for me. Any other day. And that's a form of self-care. You're protecting your vacation. Exactly. Any other day, if I had not had this sort of short time frame before I leave, then I would have taken the day off. I would have hit that wall and gone, yep, done. Right? <laughs> that would have been it. But uh, because of the, I'm trying to protect the vacation, I, I, I kept coming back and coming back. But I didn't power through the tired. I didn't flip the the switch back on again and say, screw it, I'm going to use the reserves because I don't want to show up fried to my vacation because then I will be cranky for most of it. And I am not happy when I'm cranky. Nobody around me is happy either. So <laughs> when mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So I try to stay happy. <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it's, one of those things that, that I think that we do so badly in our culture and and when you have trauma brain, because trauma brain is shit's about to go sideways. We've got to pay attention, right? And, you know, trying to reprogram your trauma brain to allow you to have a warm and rich and full life is difficult. And so part of it is habitual. Part of it is energetic Part of it is perspective shift. Part of it is, you know, learning new skill sets. And, you know, I mean, that's all the stuff that we work with in inner peace, right? When we do inner peace one-on-one, we work with all of that stuff. But that's what it's about so that you can learn to relax and be still and be in a state of relaxation for the sake of relaxation. That is the purpose. That is the purpose of the time. It's not slothful when you're intending to be still, right? Because it's purposeful stillness. And I think that 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 purpose needs to be for the sole purpose of nourishing and caring for ourselves, not so that we can be more productive uh, in the next step. And I think that that's something that we're often guilty of is is even if even if we do care for ourselves, it's why well, I need to take care of myself today, because I know tomorrow I have this and this, you know, like it's, it's caring for myself so that I can dump it all back out again tomorrow, when in essence, um, caring for ourselves needs to be caring for ourself, so that we can be and in that being is is where we find our purpose and value uh, as as a human being in our being. And and so I can hear people out there saying, um, well, but, you know, it's okay to plan if we're going to have a hard day and take care of ourselves earlier and whatever. And that's not at all what you're saying, right? Yeah. What you're saying is take care of yourself all the time and then, you know, do a little extra on the days. Take care of yourself not. because you matter, not because what you're doing tomorrow matters. Take care of yourself because you matter. Life will continue on and the things that you have to do will still be there. 
Yeah, there's a there's a woman on TikTok right now, and she's in the witch community. I can't remember her name, and I apologize. I will put it in the show notes. Uh, I will find it. Uh, but she is actually talking about doing deity worship with herself, worshiping herself as though she is a deity, and doing the altars to herself and the 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 commitments to herself and feeding herself well and, you know, all the things that she would do to give honor and, and service to a deity she is doing to herself, which I think is fan freaking fantastic. And I will find the, I will find actually not just her, but the TikTok that she did where she talks about this because it's beautiful. And I think that that is a perfect example of a non sloth based relaxation and self-care practice, right? Yeah. You to treat yourself as the beloved. Uh, just a reminder to uh, like the, your, your episode, rate your episode, share your episode with, with other people. If you think you've got other people who would appreciate this and the greatest gift you can give me is to share this episode with your friends and uh, to, to say nice things about it, to encourage other people to listen as well. So, uh, and if you're curious, and I mentioned the Inner Peace 101 program. If you're curious about that, you can go to my website at kellysparta.com, scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see Inner Peace 101 right there on the homepage. You can click on it and find out more about it. It is the starting point for all spiritual work that you want to do. It is a fantastic program that will change your life in four months. You will feel totally different. Your stress levels will drop through the floor and you will be like, I can't even imagine thinking about life the way I used to. So uh, I would love to have you there and talk to you about it. So check it out. And uh, that's all we have for this week. So Tune in next time when I share another episode on energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Kelly Sparta here with Grant Merrill, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. So long. Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon. Within my car, I'm all alone. But feeling good and feeling strong. I'm driving